And how much have you seen Jake Odom play? And what do you think of the kind of player he is? Well, I've seen quite a bit. Um, I try to watch every game I possibly can. Um, I followed him through his freshman year all the way through. Uh, he's a very talented player. He plays his well, uh, position very well. He's multi-talented where he can pass, he can shoot. Um, you know, you can handle the ball very well. Uh, it's just been a pleasure to watch him play. Now, you played with a good point guard back in the day at ISU and Steve Reed. How much does he remind you of Steve Reed a little bit? Well, this, this, uh, Jake is more of an attacker. He'll attack the rim. Steve was more of a spot-up shooter, uh, very talented player. He can get where he wanted to go with the ball. Uh, but uh, Jake rebounds the ball. He can do a little bit of everything. And uh, uh, Steve was very valuable in, in the way we played. Uh, but Jake's more on the attack side. Would you have liked to play with a Jake Odom? Well, everybody likes to play with a guy that can pass the basketball. <laughs> <laughs> you you read that smile, would, would he have helped that scoring average of yours a little bit? Probably. <laughs> um, you know, it, it all depends on how you play and, and where the ball goes and uh, if you get in a shooting motion. Uh, but I like how he plays. He's a very talented player. Do, who does he remind you of either past or present point guards? Um, well, I never, in college, I never played with a point guard quite like him. Jimmy Smith was a very good uh, passer, and, and he was big for his size, and he could get where he wanted to go. But uh, he went on attack mode um, like Jake, and I like that. I like when he attacks the basket and makes plays. Anything he's done, you said you followed his career quite a bit at ISU mm -hmm. that has really impressed you? Well, the one thing he does, he controls the game, um, especially on the offensive end. Uh, he waits till his players get in position, then he initiates the offense. and. Uh, uh, they don't play uh, up and down 100% uh, of the time, mm -hmm. but when he's got control of the ball, you know something good is going to happen. He's done a few things that you did at ISU. He's the triple-double last time that happened was you in, in 79. Does that stuff impress you, the way he's able to, to do that stuff? Well, anytime you have a point guard uh, or a two guard can get 10 rebounds, that's quite, quite well. I mean, they do a good job of, of uh, playing the game the way it's supposed to play, be played. They're fundamentally sound. And uh, Jake's proven that uh, he can do multiple things while he's on the basketball court. Now, you got to the uh, line quite a bit during your <laughs> career and were able to convert. He's certainly done the same thing. What kind of player do you have to be, the attacker, to be able to get to the rim like that and hit your free throws? Well, you got to attack the rim. Uh, you know, it's easy to take the jump shots, but uh, you, know, you like to start off uh, being aggressive, and, and Jake's done that. And uh, once you get to the line, you got to make them. you got to convert them because they are free throws. Now, you pay attention to ISU and records. Uh, he recently broke one of your records, most made free throws in school history. Would you like to lace them up again and, and, get, that, and get that record back? <laughs> Not really. Uh, uh, you know, records are made to be broken. And uh, while I was there, I had an opportunity to break some. And I know it's a good feeling, but uh, I still have plenty left. Is it impressive, I mean, to get to the line that much to, to break that record? Uh, it is. Um, you know, I, I just played three years mm -hmm. at Indiana State. And, uh, um, my brother, when he played there, he, he was on attack mode a lot. Uh, but uh, to get there a lot, it, it just shows you how committed you are uh, to take the contact and try to finish the plays. He kind of started his college career a lot like you. He, he was a walk-on. No one offered him scholarships. Uh, no one really knew about him at first. How impressed are you with where he came from as a walk-on to where he is now? Right, and uh, he played very well his freshman year. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he's improved each year. I think he's got a career ahead of him. Um, you know, obviously you got to continue to improve. Um, the pro game, game is completely different than the college game. But with his skill set, I think he'll fit right in. You speak of the program, a lot of people wonder, they, they don't want to see him leave ISU, but can he play professionally either overseas or maybe in the NBA? What, what do you well, think? I think with his skill set, he will play beyond on his college. Uh, I don't know where, what level, but uh, that depends on him. Talk about the greats at ISU. Obviously it starts with you and then there's everybody else. A lot of people are debating. It, it's hard to tell where he's at because he's still playing. But do you think he, maybe he falls in the top five of all time to ever put on a Sycamore I uniform? really can't remember that far back. <laughs> and I know uh, Rick Williams was a very good player. I know Carl Nix was a very good player. Uh, there's a lot of good players that come through there. Uh, but he's up there. Uh, you know, I don't have the whole list. I don't want to make anybody mad. But uh, uh, I do know that he's a very talented player. And it's always fun to watch him play. One thing that sticks out to me, one stat of his, is he's tied with you for the most wins at ISU versus nationally ranked opponents with, with four. He's in the top five of wins all time. Obviously, he's a winner. Just how important is that? Well, it's great for your, uh, your uh, I was going to say franchise, but <laughs> it's great for your team and, and you know, your college and 
and everything else. But uh, the one thing about it, uh, if you're a consistent winner, everybody can, looks at you as a winner. And uh, he's proven that he, he can play at a high level, and it's good for everyone. Uh, the ISU program now, you said you've been following that. Four straight years of 18 or more wins, never been done. Just talk about the current state of the Sycamores program and where you think it's at. Well, they got a good coach. And uh, I've seen that uh, uh, when they made the decision to, uh, you know, change coaches mm -hmm. and, and um, bring a guy in that has been around basketball his whole life. And uh, when you have a great, great leader at the top, usually good things happen. Obviously, you speak of your fondness there. Just how much respect do you have for Coach Lansing? Well, I don't know him real well, but he comes by here uh, in the summer a few times. And uh, I just know that when they made that change, everything uh, as far as Sycamore basketball changed. And I think it's a good change, and I think it's something that uh, they should do their very best to keep him. Um, you know, he, he's uh, very talented. Uh, he recruits good players. He knows how he wants to play, and he gets players to fit in the system that he wants to put out there. have to ask you about another MVC team, Wichita State, making a lot of headlines, and your 79 teams being talked about because they were unbeaten like the Wichita State team. Have you been able to see them play, and what do you think of what they're doing this year? Well, they're doing an amazing job. Uh, I was a little disappointed in Indiana State letting them uh, get out of Terre Haute with a win. Uh, they had every opportunity to win the game, but uh, they're very talented. Uh, hopefully they'll make a long uh, run in the playoffs. Uh, a Creighton, which was in uh, uh, the Missouri Valley Conference uh, for years, uh, have an outstanding team. So it's good to watch all the old teams uh, do well. They have a chance to go unbeaten like you guys did. Are, are you cheering for them to go unbeaten, or do you want to keep that 33-0 and mark at Indiana State? Would, would you like well, for your guys? Well, you know, we had an opportunity to beat them at Terre Haute, and they'll have another shot at them mm -hmm. in the Missouri Valley Conference. So. Uh, Obviously, I want Indiana State to win, but uh, if it don't happen, I'd like to see him go undefeated.